Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. Terrorism is the new evil in our world today. It is perpetrated by fanatics who are utterly indifferent to the sanctity of human life. And we, the democracies of this world, are going to have to come together to fight it together and eradicate this evil completely from our world. It concludes that Iraq has chemical and biological weapons, that Saddam has continued to produce them, that he has existing and active military plans for the use of chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes, including against his own Shia population. By a unanimous vote, the purpose of that resolution was to disarm Iraq of its weapons of mass destruction. However, the origins of this global plan were not created in the offices of the White House. In reality, their roots lay in another war. This time, the year is 1095, and the place, Clermont, France. The 11th century Europe was ruled by the church, which held a firm grip on the hearts and minds of the people. This power enabled Pope Urban II to wage war on the Muslim Caliphate and crusade in what he called a War of the Cross, to recapture the land of Jerusalem. It had been under Muslim rule since the year 637, but in 1099, this rule was brought to a bloody and sudden end. In the name of the cross, women were raped and murdered, children were put to the sword, and it is said that blood ran in the streets knee-high to the horses. Out of this land of bloodshed and terror, a group of men arose, 
men that would stop at nothing to get what they wanted, no matter what the cost. Twenty years after Jerusalem was taken, the Dome of the Rock was seized by a group of warrior monks calling themselves the Knights of the Temple of Solomon, or more simply, the Knights Templars. In Jerusalem, the Templars began to deviate further and further away from the practices of Christianity. They learnt the secret arts of the Kabbalah, an ancient form of Jewish magic, along with its dark rites and rituals. I will give every soul safe conduct to Christian lands. Every soul. The women, the children, the old, and all your knights and soldiers, and your queen. No one will be harmed. I swear to God. The Christians butchered every Muslim within the walls when they took this city. I am not those men. I am Salahuddin. Salahuddin. What is Jerusalem worth? Nothing. Everything. In 1307, King Philippe of France arrested them for charges of denial of Christ, homosexuality, and idol worship as well as magic. In 1314, Pope Clement V declared all Templars as heretics to Christianity, ordering all their properties to be seized. Their leader, Jacques de Morlaix, was captured and burnt to the stake. Just when it seemed they were finished forever, a glimmer of hope arose from a seemingly certain end. They were to find a safe haven as well as an ally. But not in France. In fact, in a country in a desperate struggle for independence against the English. The country of Scotland. For some, Scotland's hope of independence had died with the death of William Wallace. However, to the King of Scotland, Robert the Bruce, the arrival of the Templars gave him a new secret weapon. Their experience, gained over 200 years of fighting the mighty armies of Islam, had made them expert in combat and warfare, and more than a match for any army brought before them. In 1314, the Templars, allied with Robert the Bruce and his army, took to the fields of Bannockburn in the long-awaited showdown with the English. Robert the Bruce's foresight paid off. The 25,000 strong English army suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of only 6,500 men. The dream of an independent Scotland had finally been achieved. The Templars had brought themselves back from the brink of destruction and never again would they allow themselves to be destroyed. This time they would control the country by controlling its king. And in order to preserve their secret order, the Templars would have to die or more precisely, the name would have to die. The Templars who had escaped Europe were finally laid to rest in Roslyn Chapel, Scotland, which stands to this day as sign of their presence in Britain. Their descendants became the true power of Scotland. In 
1446, William St. Clair began building Roslyn Chapel in Roslyn, a village south of Edinburgh, which eventually became a real Masonic lodge. It was actually the headquarters of the Knights Templar, also called the Temple of Yahweh. In 1480, the chapel was completed under the direction of Oliver St. Clair, now called Sinclair. In due time, the Scottish family Sinclair created a Masonic system of its own. Sir William Sinclair became the first Grand Master of Scotland in 1736. He was connected to the secret order Prière de Sion. On Friday, the 13th of October, 1307, several Knights Templar were arrested in France, including the Grand Master of the Order, Jacques Bernard de Molay. Jacques de Molay was sentenced to life imprisonment, but he claimed that his order was innocent. He was burned at the stake on Ile Saint Louis in the Seine near Notre Dame on the evening of the 18th of March, 1314. Many Knights Templar fled to Scotland, where they preserved the secrets of their order and infiltrated the existing guilds. In 1420, the band Knights Templar founded a lodge in Scotland where they established their international headquarters. In 1603, the death of Queen Elizabeth I left England without an heir to the throne. By virtue of descent, King James V of Scotland became King of England. In doing so, Scotland and England joined to form a new kingdom and the power that the Templars held over Scotland spread to give them a firm grip on the whole of Great Britain. For over a hundred years, the Templars concealed their activities, fading into the background until they were little known and little remembered. However, they did not cease to keep a firm grip on Britain. All the time they were planning, regrouping and infiltrating positions of power in all corners of the kingdom. In 1717, the Templars made their reappearance in Europe. They had grown in both number and strength and were now ready to coin a new identity, free from their reputation of the past and given credibility by none other than the monarchy and aristocracy of England. And the name they chose for themselves was a name that will be known by many, but understood by a few. This new name, the Freemasonry. When the so-called Founding Fathers of America landed on Plymouth Rock, not only did they bring with them disfranchised people, they also brought the Freemasonic elements of Europe. The injustices which the Fathers of America were escaping from in Europe was also to be found in the new land, in the form of a tyrannical British regime. In order to gain complete dominance of the new state, the Masons used the same methods to gain control of France. Although the British monarchy was run by the Masons, the American War of Independence was a necessary action. This time, however, previous mistakes would not be repeated. The near defeat the Masons faced against Napoleon and his army in Europe taught the Masons a lesson. Any forthcoming leaders of the resistance must follow the Masonic agenda. The best way to do this was to ensure the leader himself was a Mason, and the leader who took the war to the British was none other than George Washington.